Okay, Courtney's giving me the thumbs up. So welcome to Brenda's Brushstrokes and Bisque painting workshop on Thursday at 7 Central Time on May 7th. So hope everyone had a great week. So we're, we have our fairy box here that we will, our fairy box from April 1st. And we're going to work on tonight and probably yet next week. So we have our little girl that came and our little boy and our fairy house. So these are the done ones. So we'll bring in our pieces that we're working on. So this is our house that we've been working on. We did our turquoise on the little snail last week. We did our dragonfly, our ladybugs, our door. So we have left ours our mushrooms, the silver on our doors, some eyes on our ladybugs and our mushrooms. So we will start with our mushrooms and we're going to start with our light brown so i like to use my aluminum foil but you can use your tile or your paper plate or whatever it is you use it all works good we're easy going here so we have our duncan acrylic stain and it's os467 light brown Courtney wants to write that in there for you guys. OS467 light brown. And we'll need just a little bit of that. And I'll put it on my foil here. And then we don't have a real, we have to go around our knot here to lighten that up because the wood part of the stumps are usually lighter and then the bark is darker. And then we'll have our mushroom stems to do. So we don't need a huge brush, but we need, oh, we'll go with our artist paintbrush size three, our boar bristle brush. And I'll just grab a little bit of my paint. And then I'm going to brush back and forth on my paper towel to dry out my brush and just have a little bit left in there. So we're dry brushing this piece. Um, so when you're dry brushing, you want to brush across your texture. So we're going to brush across our texture on our um, knot here so we can get that color a little bit lighter. Again, I grabbed my paint from my um, puddle and I'm brushing it out on my paper towel. I'm just going to brush back and forth across my texture. And we kind of have an angle here, so we're just going to work kind of at, at that circular angle. And lighten up our knot. That's actually the wood, the meat of the wood in there. And that's lighter, so I want that lighter. Um, you could have painted a, another color to give it another trim note color. You do whatever you want. We, we're not too picky, as long as you like it. So I hope everyone had a great week. It's been a more hectic than normal week here, but hopefully it's the last, last one like that. Um, your boxes were all picked up yesterday by the postman, and you should have received an email with your tracking number so you can see where it's at and when it's coming. Um, shipping, we have noticed with everything we've received and people are receiving that it is there's delays in it, so it may take a little longer than of our current social situation with the virus going on. I'm just brushing back and forth across my texture. Now I have to kind of switch um, the direction I'm going, so I'm going across it over here on the side. It's kind of flat. There's not a whole lot of texture there, but I still want to work it in there. And then I'm going to actually bring it right around to my footstep here. So we, the Courtney does have a waiting list if anyone wants to add gnomes, the set of three gnomes to their June box, we can do that. I'm already uh, pouring those. And I have probably half of the June box poured and I'll get that cleaned and fired and then we'll get our sample so you guys can see what that's looking like. So I'm just working my way around dry brushing back and forth across my texture to lighten up 
knot hole. You can see it's getting lighter now than the bar. You could have done it in another color, like a dark purple or something, just to give it a different um, accent color, just like you near a house. Uh, just one natural color of the wood. So hopefully we have um, better connection with the internet here the, tonight and in the last couple nights since their little update, because that's been a little frustrating. Just going back and forth, going across the texture, even on the, on the um, steps here. And I'm bringing it out a little, little bit more to the edge of that knot hole. So we have freeze warnings out for tonight, and I think the next three nights actually, um, which is normal for us. Our last freeze date is usually Memorial Weekend, so. Okay, just keep brushing across your texture until you get it built up. By going across it, that lets your dark shadows in your crevices. If you would go with it, that's going to fill in your crevices and you'll lose that. Back and forth. And slowly build it up. Just keep going, working your way around. That, that way it keeps drying where you were, and then you come back around. It's ready for the next coat. And even the step there you could have done like in a gray if you wanted to, but it, I just kind of wanted it to be part of the knot hole, so I just did the brown, the light brown. We're working our way around, and I do want to come down a little bit on the inside knot. I don't need want a whole lot of back. I want some of more of the knot color, the wood color, I mean, just a little bit of the black for the shading. So if any of my local girls are watching, I will be taking your boxes back with me tonight. I um, couldn't help Courtney package boxes time because I couldn't take off of work because your last two weeks you can't be off for your vacation money. She did it all herself with Jason helping her, so that was great. And a lot of work. <laughs> she says it doesn't feel great. Well... Yeah, it's been a tiring week for both of us, but that's all right. We're on our last last month of that, hopefully. And then next month will be our 12th box, so that's pretty cool. So then July will be our one-year anniversary, so we got something special coming in the boxes for that. I better not say more than that or I'll be in trouble. Um, and I think Courtney had said we have our first eight, all of our first eight subscribers. Do we still have all of the first eight? Not like the, all, like every first person, but we have eight from the first group, from the first month and the eight that are still alive. Right, that's what I meant. Yeah. So our eight ladies that subscribed the very first month last July are still with us, so that's pretty special. Okay, so you can see that the knot is nice and um, lighter in our bark. So now we're going to come over to our mushroom stems, and we're going to do the same thing. So these are pretty smooth, so I kind of do that little stroke or comma stroke on them that kind of rubs that color right in when it's more smooth like that instead of brushing back and forth across it. And if you get too much when you brush, you can... Go back to your paper towel and brush it out again, or brush it out a little more. I'm just brushing across, kind of across these little stems. Going real gently so I don't get the um, light brown on my 
trunk and on my grass, bringing it right up to the bottom of the mushroom cap. And we'll get this a little bit lighter yet. So of my peonies, I noticed they're about an inch tall, and Courtney's are about eight inches tall. <laughs> and that's the ones in the shade. Yeah, the house like 14, 18 inches. So she says the ones in the sun are about 14, 18 inches tall already. So it's a big difference down here, which I'm only an hour away. It's not that far, but it's definitely makes a difference. Mm -hmm. I think this weekend I have a rose bush I need to move because we can, yeah. it it grew a little more than it should have and it's on the corner of the side of the driveway and it kind of wakes you up wakes you up every time you go through there. I thought it was dead but it's greening back out so I'm gonna move it. It's a pretty prickly thing so it's gotta catches your attention. Catch you. So just brush back and forth or brush in your little commas, little half C strokes here and get our um, stems, the color built up. And that goes pretty easy. Pretty quick. Paint seems to go on really well with these um, artist paintbrush brushes. I really like how quick it seems to go on. I'm just going to work it down to my green and I start up in the stem and then I just slowly nudge down towards the green that way I can see right where it's going. So we're still on lockdown for the month of May, I think till like the 26th, but a few few places have been opening up more. With, diff with certain rules that they got to go by. So I think some greenhouses opened up with curbside pickup and stuff like that. Alrighty, so we got that done. We got our little doorknob knot hole done. Now I'm going to grab my ivory and just highlight it a little bit. So we have our Duncan Courtney Opaque Acrylic OS432 Ivory, OS432 Ivory. And I'm just going to give that a shake because it's been sitting here all week. And we'll just need a little drop, OS432 Ivory. So Courtney got us a new camera this week, but we haven't even had time to play with it. I don't even know if she had time to get it out of the box. She said she charged it. So now I just want to highlight my knot. knot. I'm going to use that ivory to do that. I just want to get on the higher spots. I still want to let some of that light brown show through, but I just want my highlight right on the, like the high spots, like the light was hitting it. So right through the, the you want to go through the center have it the heaviest and then less as you go out because you do want a little bit more as you go out. So just brushing across that texture right on the top. Right on the top of the knot where the most light would be hitting it. And then we'll go a little bit lighter as we go away from the top. So we have a nice gradual color change. And then just a little bit on the inside too. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Brush your brush out good on your napkin. Again, most of it right on top where most of the light would be hitting. And then just a little bit on the sides where less light would be hitting it. So you have a nice gradual color change. And a little bit on the side here. And a little bit just off of the in, onto the inside, off of the top center. And I think I want a little bit more on my top center here where the light would be hitting it a lot. 
And then our door stoop would have a little bit of the light hitting it too. So I'm just brushing across it and it's it's just highlighting that rim because that's right where the light would be hitting it, the edge of each step. Alrighty. And now we'll go and highlight our mushroom stems just a little bit. Get them a little bit lighter color. I'm just brushing back and forth. And you got to turn it to get to the back. So does everyone have plans for Mother's Day weekend or is everyone quarantined and staying home away from everybody? There's everybody meet and just stay six feet apart. Courtney says she hasn't done any shopping. What, for me? You don't got to shop for me. That's all right. I'm just brushing back and forth, so I'd rather you stay away from the store and not get sick. Courtney says I don't want anything handmade from her. I don't know. Help haul the molds. That'll be good enough. <laughs> she says that's too much. <laughs> that's word I, word she planned. Well, there you go. She says Mother's Day, birthday, Christmas. Got everything covered for the year. Yeah, that's that's next about it. Five next five years. Oh, not even the next year, the next five years. So I wanted our little stem a lot um, lighter and not just highlighted. So I'm getting it a more lighter because usually the mushroom stems are pretty light. But I'm letting the light brown towards the edges and then the more towards those crevices. And that's about how we want that, right down to the green. I'm going to look at my door. Now I have a little bit of the light dark brown here, so I'm just going to come with my ivories, kind of even that out a little bit. So you want to go back and look at where where you were, so because a lot of times you might notice something that you missed and that the color is nice and even, not blotchy. Like a yeah, Courtney says she thinks everybody's, a lot of people are quarantined. So, that's okay. There we go. So, well, let me look. We got that done. So, now we will go to our, what does it say? We do the white, we got to do our mushrooms first. So, we'll do those with rust. Let's see, we're going to take our Doc Holiday DH28 rust, or if you have the Duncan rust, that'll work too. And I'm actually going to not use the brush I was using because I'm going to use that on the little girl and the boy because um, I know I need that ivory color kind of. So let's see. We need um, those mushrooms are kind of little. It's kind of big. I'm going to use my APB, my artist paintbrush, my flat one, um, number three. Otherwise, the three round would work too, but I want to save that for my... Um, the boy and the girl because we're going to do those next so I don't want to get rust in that and then I don't have it. So now I'm, I have the rust and I brushed it out and now we're going to get our mushroom caps done up in rust. I like to do anything with, that's going to be red with rust first. It just brings a better red color. Um, you could paint these guys any color you want. They didn't have to be red. I just thought the red and white mushrooms seem to be kind of popular. Courtney's yawning over there, and I'm right with her because I got up at 5 this morning to fire the big kiln. Um, then I had to put some fans on it to get it cooled off to bring her some bisque that she needed. And I don't, I don't fire it at night when I'm sleeping or if I'm not at home, so... So I had to start the morning a little bit earlier than usual. Mm 
Yeah, I'll sleep good tonight too. I'll sleep good Saturday morning. That's when I want to sleep. <laughs> Mm. Your cat won't let that happen. Yeah, if the cat don't come making circles around on my bed and walk on my head and hair and meow and he doesn't like it when I sleep in. So we're just getting our rust on our mushrooms and then we'll switch to our red. And I'm just doing nice light, light strokes back and forth kinda. Up and down, back and forth, little commas to get into the little areas. I have a Crest kiln, and then the new that yeah. new to us. It's actually a Gear kiln. Um, I I think it's by like L and M as just has the Gear label on it. It's a pretty good size one. That one, it's not. I mean, there's plenty out there that are a lot bigger than it. I can get three times. That one holds three times as much as the other one, so it's pretty nice that way. Um, I can cool the little one off a lot faster in a rush than that big one. That big one does not like to cool off. It really holds the heat. And I usually don't like to rush the cooling. I like to just let them sit overnight and cool off on their own. Um, but on occasion, like today, I did put the fan blowing on it just to help push the air, hot air off of it. And I prefer it to just um, cool naturally by itself. And then you take your pieces out when they're cool enough to touch that you don't have to wear the gloves. So if you have to wear gloves, it's really too hot to be taking your pieces out. You should let it cool to um, where you can lift them out with your hands without gloves on. Especially um, especially your glazes and stuff like that. They don't crack, crackle. But it's just better to let them dry naturally. Not dry naturally, cool naturally. Oh, we're both got brain dead here. <laughs> you get a little more rust. I want to get a little more on the underside there. That's kind of dark. We'll just brush our rust on to build it up, and then we'll switch, switch to our red. Wanted to get a little bit closer here. There's a lot of the black brown coming through and I just need a little bit on the on the edges. And I think as long as we have the rust in the brush, I'm gonna grab the little girl because she's got mushrooms. They have the mushrooms on them too. Although I did hers in the turquoise, so I'll probably do his his is in the red. And it don't matter, you can do your mushrooms or any of the colors, any color you like. So what? Oh, so Cordy says to show you. So the little girl, hers are in turquoise, and then his are in the red. So we'll put the rust on um, him as long as we have it in the brush. So I'm just going to grab him. Um, so Cordy said to tell you what we did with him. So on, on our first show, we color washed him with our... Um, medium brown, which is just a 50-50 water and paint, and then you brush it on, and then you wipe it off with a wet, damp sponge, and you let your color your color in your crevices for your shading, and then the color color it'll just dry brush a lot quicker because these were more more light pastel colors, so I didn't want the real dark brown on it. Um, so then now those have been so this is like the third third class, so they're nice and the color will go on nice and easy instead of washing them and then trying to dry brush right away. It's better to let those um, dry. Even just an hour is a big help, but I like to do it one day and then dry brush the next or later. So now I just have my rust in my brush and I'm just going to um, dry brush my little mushrooms here. And you, you could do each one in a different color if you want. It's what it's whatever you're going to do. There's no no set rules. Whatever you And I'm not going to do the under part because I do want that to be more of the cream ivory color. So we'll just work our rust on here. And 
which normally I probably would have done the um, ivory first because that's lower than the cap. So we have it in the brush. I'm going to do it. I'll just have to be more careful when I do the ivory so I don't get it on the rust. And you can turn flat brushes on, on their side and you can use that. That's more of a skinny part of that brush to get into the little areas. Or a brush would work too. So we had a bunch of supplies ordered, ordered and came already today. So Courtney will be getting those on the um, web page updated next week because she's going to take the weekend off because she's been working her butt off all week here. And it's Mother's Day weekend too, so I'm just dry brushing my rust in here. Let's see all the um, clay and the the powder clay and the talc for making the slip came this week. Courtney says all four thousand pounds of it. But my nephew is such a genius. And pallet jack, so we didn't even have to handle every bag. He just loaded it off the darn trailer and right into the storage shed. It was so nice. So big thank you to him. And I'm waiting for the pump to come because that hasn't come yet. Um, no, it hasn't even shipped. I don't even have a tracking number, so I messaged them people today because that was the 23rd of April already. So I'm a little disappointed with the length of time that's taking. So I'm still brushing back and forth with my um, rust, just building that up so we can do this color as long as we had it in our brush for our little fairy house. We're just going to get right over onto this one. It's a mixer. It goes into the pouring table and that has a pump pump or pump in it, I guess if that's like what you want to call it. A motor to pump. So that'll be pretty handy. Once our lockdown is over, we plan on going to do a little mold digging. A place that we've been to once before. But that probably it won't be till June. Yeah, Courtney thinks it's May 26 before they let us loose. Um, so I'm just building up my run. I put the red on. We have a nice even coverage. So you want a nice even rust. It's just um, blotchy, and you can see the um, white bis through it, and your red is going to be blotchy too. You want a nice even coat, you just keep building it up. You go from one area, just work your way around clockwise. That way you know where you're at. And then it, it dries. Like now I'm on this mushroom, like at 7 o'clock, and I'll go down to the 10 o'clock, and now this one will dry while I'm up here. By the time I come back around, it'll be nice and dry, and the paint will stick to it really well. So that's kind of how I work my way around a piece. There is a little bit of intention to it. And now I'm over here at the five o'clock one and back to our seven o'clock one. Now that's nice and dry. We can add another little coat. And so we'll let that sit aside and we'll go back to our house and let that dry and we're going to grab our real red. So we have um, OS483 Courtney real red. Duncan O483 Real Red. And that's just a nice um, deep red. It's not a bright orange red. It's just a nice fire truck red. I have enough for 10, ten mushrooms there. So just grab my same rust and dip it in there. And I'm going to brush it out and I'll work it up in there good. And now we're going to. Dry brush on right on top of that rust. I brush again. And let's see, we have 
had where we ordered the clay from, we were able to order um, some molds. I think I told you guys that last week. So those all came. Um, they're really wet. You have a couple of more dripping, had drips on them, even of water. Those drying on the, with the fans, but it's nice that we have that option to order um, the Duncan molds, the Seattle molds, Doc Holiday molds, Donna molds. So that, that'll be good. And then they um, shipped right on the pallet, right on top of the clay. So that was really nice. see our fly we had some ordered some extra flyers or some clay magic for our what was it the august box for the hedgehogs and then some truck flyers oh and then the july we got the july ones too with the jingle and jangle on them so then i think we have all our flyers for our boxes through august we should have everything oh we need our light cords yet That'll be an extra in your July box because that um, Christmas in July piece will light up. Yeah. So we're working on lots of stuff just besides the current box. Well, let's see what else. We have to move molds from the little storage shed to the big storage shed get all in one place, get them out of the dining room and out of the living room. And if we're lucky, maybe even out of the garage. I don't think that's going to happen after today, though. <laughs> no, I did all I did today. She says, I bought myself a retirement gift to myself. <laughs> Uh, um, my my guess would be about three thousand moles were purchased today. Um, <laughs> so I went went from retirement to work straight on into work. Um, but we did these molds last fall, the Saturday, the Friday night before thanksgiving week and we um and of course it was dark and we had to go with headlights on our heads and um flashlights because they were in a um, by the time we got to where they were at they were in a semi-trailer um down both sides and to see them we had to have flashlights because it was dark and at the time the lady was not to break them up um and, and sell the kiln separate from the mold um, another lady bought all, and she really only wanted the kilns. And then the lady that was selling them gave them our number, and she contacted me, and I gave her an offer yesterday, and she checked in this morning and let me know, and happy retirement, three thousand more molds. Huh? Cordy says we might need another storage unit. I think it'll fit in the storage unit, the new one. Um, but I don't think the garage ones are going to fit in there like we had planned. So it's not that big of a deal. But So we got our little mushrooms all nice and red here. You can see it's nice and even. That rust really helps uh, make your red go on nice and even. So we'll go to our little boy and get his little... Uh, mushrooms nice and red. So I just grabbed the same red and I'm just going to pat up and down here, back and forth. Our little red. So we looked at, they were beautiful in good condition, really, really nice. Um, there were some Kinsey molds in there and some Native American molds, garden gardening stuff, just a nice, nice setup. So we're I'm super excited to get them. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm thrilled. <laughs> it's probably. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> no, it's 
be two trips. <laughs> he says two trips. It might be two two big you pay two big U-Haul trips, maybe. It's that wasn't an extra U-Haul though. That was a little U-Haul. Well, it's at least it's probably three U-Hauls or like ten. Ten, <laughs> ten. Ten truckloads is probably what it is. Um, but the lady is going to go through them and pick out a few that she wants yet, and then we'll we're getting the balance of them. If she wants to pour in that I have, she's welcome to let me know, and we're going to let her come and get them and pour them because I think it'll just work out really, really well that way. Believe it or not, she's, I think, 86 years old. Did, is that what it was, 86 or 83? Um, and she's doing ceramics like she was a young young lady doing them. She's a spunky girl. She's even, her daughter was going to till their garden today so she could, she plants a big garden and cans and, yep, she could run circles around a lot of us. She's quite the elderly lady. She reminds me of my grandma. So it's kind of great to see someone that age doing what she all does. So it's kind of fun being a part of it and getting the molds from her. And can't wait. It'll probably be a, I'm guessing it'll kind of be an all summer thing as she goes through them I'll just have to go get a load but I can do that and then we'll get them logged and cataloged and pour away and then I think we have one other mold dig to do and then we're probably done done with the mold digging You're done with the mold digging. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we'll really need any more after that, other than any any new ones. I mean, you always got to get the new ones that are coming out. Cordy says we don't need any more. That's not true. You wait till you start digging and you see, oh, look at this. Look at this. Oh, look at this. Yeah, they do. But... Yeah, we're not going in the basement. They're going in the garage, so... Not the garage, the storage shed. Well, them are all little ones in the basement, really, though. Oh, little, yeah, the one place we had to carry them all out of the basement just to get them. So, you never know what I get into. I'm not going to say it's not going to happen again. <laughs> Anything's possible. Anyone that knows me knows that stuff happens like that. And if you're going down the road and there's a plant sale, hey, you got to stop. So. All righty, we got our run there looking pretty good. Well, so we'll set that aside and we'll go back to our little um, house. And I think we got a little gray or something on our bow here maybe a little bit of the white let's take a little bit of white i'm going to use our jungle s431 white just to give our um, little windows i got a little bit of purple there and we'll, we'll give it just a little, little bit in. i got paint on my thumb i'm going to put my red brush aside i don't know if i'll play it again but maybe and i'm going to go back to my Hmm? Well, I'm going to go back to my ivory brush because I'm going to use the white. It won't be too stark white. And I'm just going to brush up and down and get a little bit of color on these, like the shining on our glass. Just a little bit more. And then it just like the sun rays are shining on on there and other back hurts just thinking of <laughs> uh, well we just gotta take a break and haul 
we can and log what we can and take a break. And Courtney says, I'm not good at taking breaks. Well, can't lie about that. Get it done. So there we got that window highlighted. So now we'll highlight this one just a little bit too. But it's just listing them up and seeing what they all are. Oh, it is fun, see? It's a done point and she's like done. It's like the hangry stuff where you're hungry and angry. Time to go. Time to go. She's done. Okay, so we got that window highlighted. We will do our little door knock. We'll do our dots and then our eyes up here and then that'll be done. So I need some. So I'm going to use my Duncan U-M. Six silver. Um, and Courtney says we just restocked. I thought some didn't come in. Just the quantity that I wanted. Oh, the quantity. Okay. So we have the same stuff been going out the door here the last couple weeks so probably and the Mako materials um, she'll be restocking all that stuff okay I'm going to use my artist paintbrush my nylon round because we got just these little hinges and I'm just going to dip in my silver and this I'm actually going to paint on I'm not going to Drive it right where I want it, and you wouldn't have to do it in, in silver. You could do it in black or whatever color you wanted. I just thought the hinges are, are um, kind of silver. I got enough on there for. for and we're gonna turn it and get the a little bit. Yep, so for retirement, I bought my. I can do a little. Bit. Now that I'm off. In another week. These little silver hinges, and now we'll do our silver on our handle here. What were you saying? A week. Week from tomorrow. It does. Never. Not had punch a time clock. Well, I don't have to actually punch the clock. Don't worry about being a minute early. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to do our handle here. Round so we can get the bottom of our handle here. I mean, I'm sure I'll be a, on schedule. It's just quite as demanding as. Dry in the snow if it's blizzarding out. Or walk to peak. You can because there's ice on the road and it's too slippery to. Huh? Oh, because I only live in work now. <laughs> so we had ice a couple, and it was so icy that you couldn't drive. So I had a bag of salt and sand, and a, um, like a tomato, and sprinkled it in front of me. My 
block and a half to work. I think you're supposed to be reading. Yeah, I did get a ride home. Horrendous. But with hair, you got to go to work. There's no no way around it. Just little silver doorknobs. Isn't that cute? I'm gonna. Um, so I have my Harold's brush cleaner in my water bowl here. And wash my brushes out. I just go gently earth on there. And that brushes right out. And I usually take a piece of paper towel and draw it through there. And that puts my knife in there. And then I leave it to the side. You don't want them drying, standing. The glue runs down into your Leave it. The water runs down into the glue in the ferrule. I don't want it on its um, leg. leg. Doesn't do that. Alrighty, so now we're down to eyeballs. And so we have some white on here, and I'm going to grab my. Um, let's see, those dots are actually bigger than what a stylus is. So I'm going to go to my liner. I think I have my artist paintbrush, my 5-0 liner, and I actually. Dip in the water first so that the that helps keep the paint out of your ferrule too. It just stays in the um, brush, and I'm just going to load it up with my paint. And we actually have to paint these guys because they're bigger than the um, stylus is. So we got to get some nice white dots on here, and they're already raised. All you have to do is paint them in. Let's see what else is going on. That's probably enough, right, Courtney? Mm -hmm. That's pretty roughly. It's been a been a busy week. Went from boxes getting shipped to play and tell and right before. molds. Firing. Lots of firing, yep, because of the glaze on the inside the mushrooms. I actually gla um, fired one kiln after work and then let that one cool off overnight, and then in the morning fired the other kiln. So kind of fired two kilns like five days in a row. Actually six because I fired them again last night. Although I didn't have to this morning. Oh no, I did. I did. I fired that big one. And that one takes longer to cool off, but I wanted to get all the pieces in there. So we kind of pushed the limits a little bit on that one. And we'll get our little white dot up here. Cordy asked if there's a trick. Keeping it in the circle? No, just have a nice liner with a nice point on it. That probably helps more than anything. These are this is a really nice liner. I really like it. Is it going out to end? Um, I start on the outside kind of and kind of come around and try to join them up. I mean, I so now I will start on the inside so I can let this bottom and I'll start on the inside of the white. Merge over to the outside line that way I can see right where my line is, and then I can line them up. Tammy used a stylus on Did she? Yeah. Oh, good for her. You can get bigger styluses like for the doing the malas. Um, I meant to look for a set of those, so I'd like to get those, but they're not the cheap. And you can get them from China, but it's kind of hard. Yes, stuff isn't shipping the way it should. So there's our nice little white dots on our mushrooms. And let's see, we need to put um, some little white dots for our little eyes on our ladybugs. Just little ones. So I'll dip in my, and I'm going to use my brush. You don't have to use the stylus, but the stylus would work well too. I don't want them real big, little ladybugs. Mm 
And we'll put just the, oh, I think the um, dragonfly will give some black eyes and then white dot. So I'm going to use some black, our Duncan OS476 black, Courtney. OS476 black. And I just needed. She said she did a terrible court reporter. OS476 black. Are you daydreaming? So I'm going to use my Bible liner again and just outline my dragonfly eyes. Start in the blue and merge over to the black outline or the indent of the eye, and then I can see right where to go without going beyond it, hopefully. Lisa, if you use that recipe, I think you shared that recipe from Wachoma for the clear glaze that you bought. That he used, yeah, I don't know what, I don't remember. She said it's good. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah, he was a very interesting fellow, the Watoma fellow. The, the, yeah, the great recipe guy. Yeah. That was Watoma that we went there last. That was in July when we had the tornado. So even mold getting is interesting with you when you're with me. We have tornadoes. Just about anything is able to happen. So now he's got his little black eyes. And we'll wash that out. We'll let those little eyes dry. And let's see. Um, you could add a little bit more black to the little snail's eye if you wanted, because the one on the left is it all depends on how your dry brushing went. If you want them the same size, this one's a little smaller than the other one, so we'll make those. And we'll set that aside, and we'll do our. Well, I guess black is dry already. We can do our white and the little eyes there. And I'm just dragging my brush, my white, the liner, and I'll just do a little comma up and. Let me see the one o'clock area here, just the little one on the one o'clock of both sides so you don't look cross-sided. Oh, Courtney says I'm out of frame. So I'm just doing like a little bit of C stroke in the corner, like one o'clock to three o'clock. And then I'll put a little dot right at the top at one o'clock of that comma. And you could use your ball stylus or the beer brush like I just used. So we'll set that aside and we'll go to our little girl and boy. So let's see, we got our girl and our boy. So when I look at look at a piece like this, I to decide which, what I want to do first. I want to do the lower areas. So like I would want to do the face before I did the hair. Want to do the legs before I did the um, dress because if I do the dress first, when I do the legs, I'm going to get the leg color onto the dress. Same with if I do the hair first, I'm going to get a face color onto the hair. So we're going to start with their faces. And I just used light brown. And there's other colors you could use that are skin colors. I use the OS467. Kind of wanted to have them like a little nice tan sun-kissed color. The angel flesh, that's a, or, um, they call it angel flesh. It was what it used to be. Now it's called peach fuzz. That's a nice um, skin color, too. So I'm going to back to my brush that I had my ivory and my white in it, and I'm just going to work that up in there a little bit. And the smoked salmon is a nice one, too. Cargo pants could probably be another one. Um, it all depends what color you want their skin to be. So I just went with the light brown because it gives them a nice little sun look, suntan. So I have my round artist paintbrush, number three. So we have his little legs to get, his arms to get in his face, and then for her, we have her arms and her face. I did do her little legs, like she's got little leggings on, so we'll, that's what we'll do. So I'm just going to, and I'll do the skin color on both of them, long as I kind of work on them together, as long as they have the same colors. And I'll work it right up to the creases. I'm going across the texture, so you kind of got to change the angle your brush when the, you have the mouth and the eyes under the chin here. And just work it on there. And I'm brushing fairly lightly. I'm not beating it, like really rubbing it down hard or anything. I'm just brushing fairly gently. 
get her little neck. And where her little arms are, we'll go across. And you got to kind of change the angle here where her little elbow is and bring her little hand. And then she's holding a butterfly, so or not a butterfly, a ladybug. So we're not sure of all the molds that we're getting because it was in the dark when we looked at them. But we know what we looked at, we really, we really did like so can't wait to see what's all there they were and they were double deep yep they were so they were in a shelves on both sides of the walls of a semi-trailer so that's in a field, in, in a field. <laughs> <laughs> in the house oh been were they th three tall they were taller than we were they were stacked yeah they were stacked pretty tall <laughs> so there was a lot of mold Courtney thinks there's more than 3,000. I think there's about 3,000. That'd be my guess. Courtney says the spreadsheet will tell us. Yes, it will. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping there's a bunch of Donna's stuff. It's kind of from that um, time. There was Kinsey, Kinsey molds in there, and that's about when the Donna stuff was too. So I'm thinking um, there were cactuses in there. Yep. But she might have those. That was one of the things she thought she might want. She liked like garden garden stuff, um, raccoons and stuff, so which is fine because we, we already have raccoons and rabbits and. Also, um, popular Yeah, Courtney says she's surprised at how popular planters are. It seems like the ceramic um, pots are really popular right now. Um, we did pass up a bunch, but we also have a good 10, 15 of them too. Yeah, um, our first shot by out there, they had a ton of old pots and the African violet pots. We have quite the African violet pot collection. Potato bowls. potato bowls was at the second place. I only kept a couple of those potato bowls. Her heart would be broke if she knew that. She made them for the club. Yeah, she made them for the supper clubs around here, which supper clubs are kind of a thing, Wisconsin thing, you know. It's like a restaurant. They call them supper clubs here. Okay. Out in the country, they're out in the middle of nowhere where you can go and eat a sit down dinner. Um, with the full bar, yep. So we're just working our light brown onto our um, skin tone areas here. We gotta remember, we're trying to teach, we're gabbing away. We gotta get a little more light brown. Courtney says we're at 803, so we'll probably get our, our um, skin tone colors on and see where we're at. Um, like the last weeks when I'm driving home, manure hauling semis of like the first, like three weeks ago, I met like 20 of them. Yeah, like the semi bulk things that haul manure. Liquid manure, yes. <laughs> there was I met one today coming but like three weeks ago when I went home I forgot to tell you there was like I counted like 20 of them really oh I bet you not <laughs> so in the spring the big farmers here they they put their manures in pits and then in the spring I think they are these manure haulers and they're big high tankers and it um like they haul them to different areas because there's yeah um and, and it has a terrible smell it's, i mean it's it's not like it's not like the usual farm manure smell where the where it's fresh and going out of the manure spreader it's um it's more of a um fermented stinky smell <laughs> And I met 20 of them three weeks ago when I was home. And like last week, it wasn't, I mean, there was maybe like six or seven. And now today I met one coming. So they must be finishing up, I'm guessing. I don't know. I'll probably move on to another big farmer. But 
Although when I came, what night did I come? When I went home, oh, the tractors and the corn planters and the tractors and the discs. Oh, oh my, it was terrible when I went back home. Uh, yeah, on a two-lane highway, yeah. You're just stuck. And the one thing was like a, um, a cat. It had like triangular um, tracks on it. And then these big tanks on the front, the big tanks on the back, and yeah, but it had like a corn plant planter, so I don't know if it was like a nitrogen wafer thing or what, but it was huge. Yep, it is. Not like the little tractors that we we grow up with. So I'm grabbing a little more light brown, and we'll get our little arms done here some more. Anne says that she admires that you can put in paints, only she'd rather be out with the mold. <laughs> yeah, I like all of it. The painting and the mold? Yeah. Opening the account. We'll see how I like mixing clay, how that goes. I don't like it. Oh. I mean, shouldn't be too hard. It just seemed like measuring to bake a cake, like the one lady said. Uh, but it really cuts the cost, helps cut cost, because shipping is just crazy, otherwise. That and having a move pallet. Right. Yeah. yeah. So the storage shed's, what, probably half a mile from the house? Yeah. It's pretty close, so that's going to be really handy. It's big. It's 45 by 13. So, you know, I mean, we didn't need the tallness, but that's the size that they have there, and they're actually cheaper than the lower ones, and it was closer, and um, the other ones are always full, so it just worked out perfect. So we got to get his little legs tan down here. I'm just working it on back, kind of just rubbing up and back and forth, going across our texture. So that looks pretty good. I got his hands. Make sure you get all his little fingers under his chin. Get his little neck. So let's see. Make sure she doesn't have anything on the back or him. So should we do one more thing yet? Let's see. Ten after eight. Um, let's see. So we have the face, so the next thing I would probably do on him would be his hair. And then I would probably do the dark brown, which then I would do his boots in the dark brown too. Uh, let's see, and we have that in the brush. Oh, let's go with the dark brown. So I'm going to grab our black brown, according to OS473, black brown, and give it a shake. We'll lose just a little bit. So you can put the black brown on his shoes. And you just work it up to his little legs there. See the black brown is also on her hair. And you just want to brush across it. Now that's a little wet, so i got to brush that out. So when I want to do the hair, I actually put her head on the table so it's nice and sturdy so I don't get black, the black brown all over her face. I'm just gonna nudge, starting away from the face, and I'm going to slowly nudge towards it. And you can see that the brown is building up. I can just keep nudging that in there until I get right, right to her face where I want it. And I'm just going real light. And then we'll just keep coming down a little bit. Kind of go across the texture here where the little waves are. And then I can just work it, keep working it right in there. And then we'll come down here. And if not, you could switch to even a smaller brush where you're, uh, like that's kind of a little area. I might do that with a little wetter brush. Like the flat brush might work really good to work that in there. And then we can just brush back and forth here across her little waves. 
right across the texture and that when it's real wet and shiny like that that's too wet you got to brush your brush out and we're just going to go across the texture so you guys can um keep doing the hair if you want for the week and then do these boots and i'll try to have those done by next week too and then that's where we'll um, pick up at but i'll um, just do her little face here again so we'll get start away from her face and then you just slowly lightly work your way towards it and you can see how the color the color is starting to build up and you just keep working your way to it. And I guess I need another drop. I have stuff to load up to take back with me, so I don't want to stay too long. So again, I have her head anchored on the table, and we're just going to start on her hair away from the face, and then you gradually work towards it. And if, like, a number three is too big, just go to a smaller, a smaller brush. Like, you could go to the let's see in fact if you wanted when your box gets here this week you'll have this one flat in there you might even want to wait for your one flat and use that that would be perfect for you can get down this little area here where her little lock her little curly goes underneath her chin you can get right in you turn your flat brush on its side and you can get right in there without getting her face and her um wing all full of the hair color so this will be in your box that's coming we shipped this week it was our extra in that box so you might even want to wait until you get that, that brush and use that to do the hair because you it's a little bit smaller than that or three in it you can control it a little over in those spaces And then you just keep building up your brown hair until you have it nice and brown. So I think that's what we're going to cut off. I'll finish this up before we start next week. And we'll probably get these guys finished. They should go pretty quick. So this is our finished ones and our working on ones. Um, so that's kind of where we'll leave it for tonight, I think. Um, so you guys have a great week and a great Mother's Day. And I hope those boxes arrive. I don't know if they're going to get them by Friday, though, huh? No. Some of them will. It's not all of them. Not everyone's. Cordy says most of the tracking is showing for Saturday and Monday. Yeah. Um, um, okay, so Cordy's saying some more of the metropolitan areas are behind more? or. Certain areas, yeah. It depends if you. Courtney says Michigan's one of our slower places, and that's actually close to us. Um, she can see that on the tracking, they sit in the distribution center. So um, be patient. Your box will be coming. You can check where it's at with the tracking number that you, um, that you got your email of. Um, and she'll keep watching on them too. So if there's problems, she'll know. Um, otherwise, you guys, have a great Mother's Day. Have a great week. And Enjoy our good weather that we were seeming to have. And you never know what we're going to post because you never know what I get into. <laughs> so, okay, you guys, have a great week. Good night. Happy Mother's Day.